Hi, Kit Davy here. I am a book artist and paper artist. I love making books and I love teaching people how to make books. I decided to make a little video based on the frequently asked questions that I get from students in my classes. And uh, in this video I cover uh, my favorite tools, uh, paper and where I get the paper, uh, what to do with the funny little paper scraps that you're left over with, and uh, where do I get my ideas. And at the end, I have a little tour of my studio, and uh, I did not tidy it, so uh, uh, you can see how it's set up. And uh, if you have any more questions, you can send me an email, and I'm happy to respond. My email address is kitdavy at aol.com. So I hope you learned something from watching this video. Thank you. I often get asked about the tools that I use during class and I wanted to share with you some of my favorite ones. Uh, this is a ruler by Tim Holtz and what I love about it is that you can see through it and one side has a metal edge and the other uh, side is, is straight. Plus it has these little tiny holes so you could use an awl, awl to poke and it, it helps me um, align where I uh, cut with my X-Acto knife. So I found this on Amazon and it's by Tim Holtz, H-O-L-Z. And then scissors, um, this is a pair of scissors by Fiskars and uh, I like how it fits my hands and they maintain their sharpness pretty well. And uh, th these were like a ten twelve dollars on Amazon but Costco had you can you can buy uh, two pairs of Scotch guard scissors at Costco for under ten dollars and these actually stay pretty sharp for a long time but then I use them after they lose their sharpness I uh, use them to cut things that have glue on them um, I try to remember to use these scissors just to cut paper where the glue is dry so they stay nice and clean and sharp. Another tool that I like to use is the Cropodile. Cropodile, um, it's a corner chomper, and it allows you to cut curved edges on mat board and paper like this. And you just set whether or not you want a quarter uh, round you put your paper in here and uh, press it or half round and it can go through metal like I used it for this book here this is a, a copper book so it can go through metal, metal um, and uh, also matte board and regular paper another tool that I like to use or what I, I, I often use uh, rivets in my work and uh, to um, pound the rivets into a hole that sometimes I will use this tool for. Sorry, my camera's not too far away from it. This uh, paper and metal punch uh, lets you choose two different size holes and you can also use it uh, for, for other things. Um, but this, oh boy, I don't see the manufacturer here. Um, but uh, I use this to punch through metal and through many, many layers of paper or mat board. Um, and uh, once I've, I've uh, punched a hole through paper or mat board, then I can use rivets. And I get my rivets at uh, Michael's. And I will use a little hammer like this and a tool like this that has a little flower on the end. And uh, place the rivet through the hole and then pound it with my hammer four or five times. I also like to use this bone folder. It's made by Martha Stewart and I like that it's uh, fairly sharp on one end and also on this end here um, ra rather than your typical white plastic bone folder. So those are some of the tools that I like to use in my work. 
Another tool that I really like is a scoring board. A scoring board allows you to score uh, paper so that at regular intervals so that you can get really nice creases and folds. This one is made by, um, what is her name again? Martha Stewart. And it has these regular little grooves and you put your piece of paper here in the corner and pull down with your uh, bone folder and it gives you regular and straight creases which you, that you can then quickly fold for an accordion or some other purpose. So this is a scoring board and this one is 12 inches by 12 inches. So where do I get my paper for my various bookmaking projects? I get them from all kinds of places. I often use dictionary pages because they're double-sided and they have fun images on them. Paper bags. This is a paper bag from uh, someplace in China. Uh, topo maps, topographical maps. This is from the Geological Survey. Road maps, which are nice because they are um, double-sided. Uh, National Geographic maps. This is a vintage one from I'm not exactly sure when. Then magazine pages. This is an image of uh, DMA from a magazine, which has, I think, a really great pattern to it. And then you can get uh, booklets or sheets of uh, cardstock that has color all the way through and on, and on both sides. And uh, they're really great um, primary, secondary, and tertiary colors you can get from Joann's or um, Michael's. And wrapping paper, this is some fun wrapping paper, and there are all kinds of really good ones that come in rolls or sheets. I also use uh, calendars. So here is a calendar, um, and the artist here is Tony uh, Fitzpatrick, and they're wonderful images, and some parts of this can be used for background. And sometimes with a, uh, something like this, um, where I only have one of them, I might want to, or, or it's not quite enough to make a full-on book, I might put it on my copier and I use a variety of papers on which to copy it. I can also make double-sided paper that way on the, my uh, um, computer printer copier. And one of the uh, papers I like to use on which to print is by Canon. Uh, it's matte photo paper and the number is MP101. It's an eight and a half by 11 and it's uh, 45 pounds and it's almost cardstock weight. It receives the color really, really well. So for example, this sheet right here from a magazine, I wanted to make a book, um, but there wasn't quite enough paper. So I put it in my uh, um, I put this on the screen of my uh, computer copier and put some of this paper in the tray and then um, turned the paper over and ran it through again so I'd have double-sided paper. I sometimes use uh, other uh, pads of paper that are plain that I put in my um, color copier. So this is tinted paper. They also make it in white. This is a really old pad. Um, and then... Um, paper for pens. Uh, so it depends on the weight of the paper I need. This is a nice, it's in between cardstock and um, computer paper weight. So depending upon the kind of the thickness uh, of the paper that I need, the weight of the paper I need, I might photocopy something onto one of these three different uh, weights of plain white paper. I keep a whole library of books on the bookcase in my studio because I tear out pages from these books uh, for background or for the base bases of my artist books and also um, to search for images. So for example, up here I have a few um, yearbooks and I like to use the images of nerds from long ago uh, in my work. 
And this is also a whole row of yearbooks down here. And then uh, for images, um, I use old books that have wonderful engravings. For example, this one here, School of the Woods, um, which I, uh, I got a copy from eBay. Someone sent it to me from England. And then this book here, uh, The Machinists and Toolmakers Handy uh, Books. Of, an artist friend of mine gave it to me, and it's full of all kinds of pictures of uh, machines and tools. And then I have a few uh, small um, language dictionaries, and the pages have, uh, there's a Thai one there, and also one, a German one, and the writing is very cool, makes great background pages. And um, the series of uh, books by Golden, they do books on wildflowers, birds, um, plant and animal life, and they've got great images. Um, so I go to garage sales and flea markets and pick up um, books at a, for a song, and I sometimes get them in the trash at libraries. Believe it or not, some libraries are throwing their books away. Um, and then uh, some books I also purchase um, from eBay or thrift books uh, or uh, half, half books. So here I've got some encyclopedias, some Audubon bird books, an atlas, multiple dictionaries. And uh, so I have no, no issue, uh, no problem with uh, tearing up books for both background pages and for images, which I cut up for my, uh, my books. Another question I get from students and other artist friends is, what do I do with all the little bits of paper that uh, are left over after a project? And I save these because sometimes these papers are one of a kind or they're just really cool and I can't bear to throw them away. So I have a bag on my um, work table called Bits. And when, as I'm working and I cut off little bits of whatever the project is, I, I put them in this bag. So it's a, uh, a, a large bag. Sorry, my, my phone's really close to, to it. Um, it's a large uh, like freezer bag. And then every now and again, I go through and I divide them into colors. So like pinks and purples, blues, um, yellows and oranges, greens, uh, red and orange, and uh, tan and beige, and so on. And then um, I make something called Franken paper. So I will um, pick a substrate. So, for example, this is just some ledger paper, and I just glued down all the odds and ends of black and white papers here onto the substrate, and this will become the background for another collage or even uh, a page for a collage. Here's another example of Franken paper, and this one I did it on both sides because I can cut out one of these sections and it can become a page uh, which has, um, uh, which is covered on both sides. And here's another little bit um, here, and you can see how my uh, dividing the papers up into colors helps create um, these Franken papers of analogous colors. So this one's greens and yellows and so on. And then I also, oops, occasionally will make uh, these nine square inch uh, collages. So this is just one square inch and I'll cut out a variety of those and then make a book um, where each page is a collection of nine uh, one square inch papers from my, my bits bag. And you can see I, I like to have them harmonized with each other rather than being uh, more chaotic. So they're in color family. So this is a, an accordion book. And then uh, I went through my papers and I found uh, metallic ones and um, these are also one inch square pieces of paper and then I use paper punches for those. Um, I created another little book just using the bits 
And then um, lastly, with some of my um, small bits, I've, I've made little, this is a Barbie science library. So um, uh, with little bits of paper and, and things cut out from uh, places here and there, um, I've made a series of science books like this. I had only had a few little bits of paper left from a, uh, a uh, book that I did on uh, space, um, but they work perfectly with uh, Barbie's science library. So those are some ideas for things you can do with the odds and ends of paper that you end up with, and I, I hope you start collecting your bits so that you can make use of them too. I sometimes get asked where I, I get my ideas for my artist books. And many of them just spring spontaneously into my head um, when I'm walking um, or otherwise wool gathering. But I do get them in a variety of other places. Uh, I am a member of the Bay Area Book Artists and once a month one of us teaches a book form to the rest of the group. So I learn from other artists and I occasionally take uh, bookmaking classes, taking classes from um, Macy Chadwick and Jody Alexander. And I learn a lot from experienced and wonderful book artists. But then I also get ideas from books. And this is a really good one. It's making handmade books, 100 plus bindings, structures and forms, and it's by Alyssa Golden. And it has pretty straightforward instructions lots of ideas and variations on um, the various structures. Another one is 500 handmade books. Um, and there are examples of really unique, uh, one of a kind books by artists from all over the world. And I sometimes look in here for, for inspiration. And then I, I also, um, I post every day to to Instagram, but I also follow these various hashtags. So um, book arts, book art or book arts, and book artists, book making, book maker, handmade books, handbound book, and handbound, uh, book binding, book binder, mini books, artist book, artist books, making books, book arts collective, accordion book, flag book, button, Book. And there, you could also put carousel book, star book, any kind of book structure that you've made before or, or uh, know about. You could put the hashtag and you can find examples. And then um, uh, I look at Pinterest every day too. And I'm, I have a variety of uh, topics that I'm interested in, one of which, which has to do with uh, bookmaking. And you can pretty much put in any topic around uh, book arts or bookmaking. And uh, when you click on some of those images, uh, they will show you more, give you more options, so you can see all kinds of handmade books um, by uh, different artists. And sometimes if I see something that I like, I will um, uh, follow through and maybe get to someone's website where they offer some free information. And so, for example, um, at uh, Vintage Page Designs, uh, there was an example of the Spinner book, which I thought was intriguing. So I experimented with making my uh, own take on it. Um, here's one that has circles. So I just took the concept. I didn't make it the way that she suggested. I just took the idea and ran with it. And here's another one where um, I put um, uh, fish in the openings. And then Here's another example of a riff on that idea where I put, um, I used uh, stamps as the theme in the opening. So I'll get an idea from someone else uh, from one of these sources and then just riff on it. And here's a, another idea. Uh, once I get an idea, let's say I, I see something that I like on Pinterest or uh, um, Instagram, I'll print out the, the prompt and then uh, if I have an idea, I'll put it in a clear plastic envelope and start um, gathering materials for it. So I'm gonna make a spinner book, uh, but I have these cut out heads. 
And so um, I gathered the cutout heads and I'll be using them to make a, a spinner book similar to, to these. But I started with this idea and just went on a riff. And here's another example. I saw this, oh, it was probably Pinterest, I don't really remember. And uh, it was around Valentine's Day and so I just took the idea of a, um, this is a stegosaurus or something like that, the idea of a dinosaur holding a heart and put it inside uh, a matchbox um, as a valentine. Um, and then sometimes I get these ideas that spring spontaneously, so I'll draw up some sketches and maybe um, make a, a prototype. And when I'm ready to make the book, um, I already have the germ of an idea and maybe some components. Um, and I'll, uh, when I sit down at my work table, I'll take out all the information that I've saved and start developing it further. So that's uh, kind of the process of uh, my, well, where do I get my ideas? All over the place. Um, but I like to capture them once I want to move forward with it. And here's another example, a purse book. I, I saw something that um, kind of looked like a, a purse, and then I, I went ahead and used uh, some paper that I printed out that looks like clouds and learned how to make a fold. And then I thought, oh, okay, well, a, maybe a book that has a stab binding could go inside there. So um, I'm developing this idea of the book, but I've captured the uh, components and the, and the concept in here until I'm ready to go ahead and, and uh, start working with the book. So I thought I would give you a studio tour today. So here is the stairwell that leads up to my studio and I climb up the staircase every day to come and work in my studio. This is my supply cabinet and I did not organize it. This is where I keep all my supplies for my artist books and my uh, found object pieces. Here's my work table. This side of the table is where I sit when I teach my classes. And then over here, this is my book pressing station where I use a stack of books to flatten books. This is my filming center where I film or photograph books for my website. Here is my mailing station because I sell books all over the United States and I need to have boxes and a scale to weigh things. And here is the world headquarters right here. This is where I make my books and my found object pieces. I did not tidy it up. And I have things in categories. Stamps, insects, leaves, buildings, feathers, ladies, space and leather, and so on. <clears throat> I have a library of books from which I gather papers for uh, background and images. I've got a fireplace that heats the space up. And a seating area. I meet with artists and friends here, um, although not during the pandemic. I also have a sink and mini bathroom. There's my air conditioner because in the winter time, excuse me, in the summertime it gets pretty hot up here. And then I also have a, <clears throat> a full, full bath in my studio. So here's the world headquarters and studio.